Hey everybody, Jessica Henry Gray here. I am really excited to bring you today's show. We are at this beautiful park here in Ohio, just outside of Cleveland, and I'm going to do a little bit of fall colors here. Um, I don't know if you can really see that because there's a glare on it, but it is absolutely beautiful today. And there's water and a sweet little family of mallards down here visiting. So <laughs> I think we'll have a good time here. I'm going to set up and look in this general direction where I just showed you and uh, see what we come up with. All right, so let's jump in and do a plein air. Okay. Okay, so you've seen the, the view that I'm going to be looking at. And what I've done here is I've really just kind of blocked out the masses of where I'm going to be putting the main objects. Now, this is how I would begin a thumbnail sketch. I just loosely put in the basic shapes of where these objects are going to go. I want to focus mostly on this reflective water area right in here. So I decided to crop my canvas so that it really showcases the colors and the water reflecting in here. And so you get that beautiful reflection by the trees and things that are directly above it and the stillness that I'll be painting in here will just really come across as still water. And then I'll be playing with some of the edges in here. So let me show you now, once I get things mapped out where I'm gonna be putting them, I wanna to start to establish my value relationships. And this is a little larger for a thumbnail sketch, but I thought for the sake of the complexity of this scene, I may wanna just show you a little bit larger. Sometimes I work from a little square and I work inside there to get my sketch. Other times I begin with the sketch and then I establish the boundaries as is represented by the canvas I'll be using. And by that way, I'm, I'm better able to decide, you know, maybe I need to move it up this way or should I pull it down a little more or crop it from the top, whatever. So those are situations and decisions that you can make um, when you're doing your sketch. That way, when you approach your canvas, you've got all this thinking work done and it's out of the way and you know where you're going. Now I'm making these darker scribbles right here because I really do want this tree that's on this chunk of dirt right here, this bank, to be darker and stand in front of this more atmospheric background back in here. So these leaves are gonna be sharper and crisper and that'll give you the illusion of um, near and far. And there's shadows streaking across the bank back there. And then this shadow, ha this bush has a wonderful sense of sculptural roundness. So I'm gonna squint way down at that while I paint this area in here and just let the sun play in all of these branches and I'll get some of the um, sienna and ochre of this tree here because I want to play with that in the water and have that make sense there. That dead tree <clears throat> in the way I might just move these trees over so that's gone and I'll just move the healthy ones over. And there's, uh, maybe I'll put the rock just for some interest. You can see it right in the water too. Now there's some really wonderful um, shadows under these trees and along the bank that I'm gonna use to help direct the eye. And it also helps to establish that darker value in the water. So I'm gonna put that in. And now the rest of this is simply a matter of duplicating what's above. And so um, just as I work through my sketch, and I'm gonna take a little bit more time on this, but um, you'll see too, even from your own workings, the more, you get at doing thumbnail sketches, the better you get at doing your sketches, um, the faster this will go. And efficiency is what it's all about. It's not a matter of creating a perfect sketch um, in your notebook, but a matter of um, figuring out all your plans ahead of time. So that's the whole point here. Since efficiency is the rule of the day, we wanna speed up our time. And I don't know how long the light will stay looking like this. And there's this wonderful blue sky peeking through down in the water. So I'm gonna make sure I get that in there. Okay, so that's about it. So let's jump into the painting. So to tone the canvas, I'm gonna start with a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. And I'll just make a soupy mixture here. Let's start at the top. And I'm using these colors because it's predominantly the color that I see in the fall leaves in front of me and I also like it because it will be a nice contrast underneath the surface for my greens that I'll be using.
Now when I get um, this canvas toned, I'll wipe it off a little bit and then um, I'm ready to start laying in exactly the plans that I have laid out on my thumbnail sketch. And I'll have to fix my canvas. <laughs> it seems like no matter how tight I crank these wing nuts, they still fall. Okay. So just wiping that layer off just a little bit because that Gamsol thinner is really, um, it leaves a slick surface on the canvas and I don't want that while I'm trying to paint. Okay, so referring to my sketch, I'm just gonna get a smaller brush like this and I will lay down my design as I have it in my book. So my focal point will be right about in this area because I want all of this to be water. And there's a white tree over here. It's not a birch, but I'm, I don't remember what kind it is. Um, and I'm gonna put that in place of the dead tree over here. So my, that rounded bush will be about in here. Now again, just like I did the sketch, I'm gonna be very loose in the, um, just the overall placement of things and um, just to get this all sort of mapped out. I'm thinking about massing in the shapes and what makes attractive uh, pieces of information on this canvas. And by the way, this is a 8x10 gessoed masonite board. All right, and then so the rest is pretty much water. And so the water, the trees will be about in this place. You take just a dry brush and you can dip it in your thinner and rub out. Or you want something light. Um, under this bush. And I really want to get these in place before my light changes too much. I don't want to go too dark back here because this is supposed to be lighter and more atmospheric. Maybe I'll use a bigger brush. And at this point I'm still using a little bit of thinner just to get this in place. I think I'll add a little bit of blue and ochre to this back here. I'll wipe some of that out. And again, just thinking about in terms of massing it all in. And some of these, I'll mass in some of the shadows under here because those value plans were part of my overall composition. So I do want to get those in place. Same thing with over here. This bank was very dark. And then again, some of these leaves, I'll just indicate with uh, yellow ochre and some ultramarine blue, just that they are considerably darker than what's behind it. So that gives us a sense of where we're going with those values as far as that goes. Now I want to map out again with a little bit more precision the trees over here and how they relate to the bank. And then of course as that plays in the water down here. I do like that rock. I think we'll put them right here. Put them in the water too. So this painting is going to be predominantly these three colors as I have them out on my palette. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and yellow ochre. Those three colors will be the main um, primary colors that I'll be using in this painting today. But I will be using the cad yellow, 
um, maybe a touch of a phthalo green and then also um, a little alizarin, of course white. In fact, speaking of alizarin, I'm going to start working on the shadows as I see them stretching across this passage back here. And they are sort of a purple tone. So I'm going to go with a little bit more um, ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson for those because I really want to make sure I capture that specific color. Even if I paint over these shadows eventually, I want the memory that they are that color. That's a nice uh, balance with the greens of the water, too. Look at those perfect reflections, wow. Oh, you're looking beautiful. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it is nice how that shadow gives you all those reflections. Okay, so let's jump into some color. So I don't need my thumbnail sketch anymore. I'm gonna start with the sky because I wanna get the sky up there and the sky in the water. The Anything that's a reflection in the water is gonna be a little bit darker than what it's actually um, indicating. So I'm just taking ultramarine blue and titanium white. I'm gonna lay that down. Now I'm gonna use linseed oil to thin the paint just a little bit. And when I say I'm, I'm using linseed oil, I'm really just dipping just the corner of my brush in the linseed oil just to get a little bit on there. If I need more, I can always go back and get more. But if I take too much, then I have to mix up more paint just to try to make it um, spread throughout a pile. So I'm going to add just a little bit more white to that because in the water I prefer it to be about that color blue. Get some of this back in here. So again, ultramarine blue and white. This is the reflection that I see exactly under there. Let's make that a little bit darker blue. And what's neat about this is that it starts out blue and then it fades to almost a greenish as it gets closer to us. So we'll kind of suggest some yellow ochre down here. A little bit of yellow ochre with that blue right as it gets closer to us. That's about all I can do with that. Now I want to hit up, um, I actually want to get some of these value notes while the sun is just right. So I'm taking some white and yellow ochre, looking at that sand across the passageway over here. That seems to me to be a very bright sunlit passage. So I want to get that in place before the light changes. Um, taking some of that yellow ochre and white, a little more white, and I'll grab a little bit of the alizarin just to make it slightly peachy. And I'm incorporating some of that same over here. That goes back behind that bush. Okay, and I think while I have that white there, I'm going to mix up a very light purple with alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. 
where these shadows, this tree as it fans out and kind of blends with the sand, turns into a lighter purple. Same thing with over here. Oh, we lost our rock. We'll get him back in. Okay. Now I want to capture some of that sunlight on the trees. Normally, as you know, I do start with the background and work my way to the foreground, but there are times and situations where you have to bend the rules a little bit. And in this case, where we really want that sunlit effect, I don't want to lose that. Um, so I'm just going to get that in while I see it. And that is cadmium yellow, white, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and um, I think there might be a touch of ochre in there just to keep it a little bit quieter. Okay, now I'm going to get some of the um, sunlit, sunlight on this um, fall color tree right here. A little, I'll add up just a touch of burnt sienna into that mixture. And this is only the sunlit part of that. Maybe a little bit of cad yellow. Now that white birch tree that I put over here, that's still bright green. So I'm going to get some of that in, in a little bit. So when painting trees, typically I start with a middle tone color and then I build in the darks and add the highlights. But in this case, with the lighting being very fleeting, I want to capture what I can of it before it slips away. I'll get a little bit of that birch tree's bright spring green. And in this case, it's uh, yellow ochre and ultramarine blue. Get some linseed oil to thin that down a little bit. And don't be afraid to lay down the paint. If it overlaps or whatever, it's okay. And you know, um, the planner painting is a, is a numbers thing. It's getting out there and just doing it and not being afraid and accepting the fact that it may not turn out, but you're going to keep trying and you're going to keep pushing and working at it until you're satisfied with the results. And the more you keep pushing, the more you'll start to find you're getting happier with the results. And another thing that happens in the course of that effort is you start to feel better. I mean, just being out in nature and hearing all these sounds and um, it's quiet and peaceful. There's nothing like that. Okay, so putting in a dab of sunlight through those bushes. Just gives a sense of air in there. All right, now I really do want to focus on working from the background to the foreground because I think everything is pretty much in place. Um, a little bit of ground there. Okay, so these background trees, and they are also getting sunlight on them. So I'm gonna start with that yellow ochre, I'm sorry, that's ultramarine blue little bit of cad yellow and maybe some white. Adding some white will cool it down and make it appear a little bit more bluish. And I want that for some of this atmospheric effect showing again that this is back and the rest is foreground. Okay, a little darker shadows. As I move down that tree, I'm gonna incorporate a little more burnt sienna too because It'll help to darken and enrich your greens. A little bit of atmosphere over here. And by atmosphere, I'm meaning some of that lighter um, sunlight feeling into those branches. But right where it tucks behind the sunlit area, I want that darker. And that's going to really offset that bush and make it very obvious what my focal point was in this setup. So right under, forests are always darker at their base. 
not really getting any light down there, so we'll get that a nice punch. A little bit of light hitting this bush that's sticking out of the trees. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with that as my background. While I have those colors fresh and on my brush, I'm gonna put them down in the water too. So taking those as I go out and away from the shoreline, just kind of working backwards. Now my um, bush with all the light, oops, we want more white in that, more cad yellow. But again, it's going to be a little bit darker. See how that's a little darker value than what's showing up in nature. I'm working my way down this bush. Wiping my brush off. Catching a little bit more of the sunlight color in here as we see it above. Now I'm going to just take sort of a nice uh, gray green as I see it in the water. I'm squinting down at the water before me and it's kind of changed a little bit but I'm getting a lot of this green showing through. And let's see what happens if I take a touch of phthalo green. This is the smallest touch. Not much so that's good. You don't really, just because it's green does not mean you need it in nature uh, for your tubes of paint. Um, keep that one, handling that with very delicate uh, approach. You don't need much. A little bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre in this right in here as it's reflecting those fall colors above it. Or burnt back. What do I? Ultramarine blue. <laughs> I seem to have trouble with that color. I want to make sure that this has enough light hitting it because there's some ripples and shadows on it too that I really want to get into this green. So where the tree in my water is meeting the sky in the water, I want to keep those um, kind of soft, but not too soft. I like the clean sharpness of that. It just makes the water look even more still. trees are creating stronger reflections, so we want to sharpen this up in here. And I'll add those tree trunks in, in a little bit. And that's mostly burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to get that darker impact, which will be up in here. If you're not sure about an entire passage of forest trees and colors, what's up in there, just squint down at it and take it as a large mass of general gray green and paint that in. And then you can come back through with variations into that. So a few little flecks of green sunlight hitting the leaves or gives it the sense that there's more to it, but you didn't bother to take the time to paint it all, which isn't necessary. Oh, we have a family of ducks floating by. Why, well, hello! <laughs> So 
looking where I want it to be. Now, I'm going to put this sharper uh, section of greens in here. And we'll go with ultramarine blue, grabbing some cad yellow. Maybe now I will take some phthalo green and mix that with a little bit of cad yellow to get that bright, brilliant green. And some of those in there. I'll also get the darks too, because I've mentioned really making this pop out in front of that passage behind here. I can even take this a little bit further and smooth out some of that brushwork so that this brushwork really stands out. So I'm going to take again and pop in those brights again. I'm going to be careful not to just use straight cad yellow because it just has such a fakey yellow <laughs> um, feeling. So make sure to add a little bit of something to tone it down a little bit, whether it's the blue or whatever you need. Take some burnt sienna and white with a little yellow. And get some of those fall leaves as we're playing around in this up over here. here. You can see how in a very short time a painting can start to come together and really something pretty to look at and remind you of a lovely uh, place or location or memory. Mm. So now I'm just taking a little bit more of that purple that I responded to at the beginning. And I want to put these shadows back in place. I'll pop in a little bit of highlights in through these shadows, but I do want them playing a, a more important role. And I see some of that grayish purple over here. I just put some of these uh, passages with the brush strokes kind of cleaning up the shoreline and also using a little bit more of that vertical uh, brush stroke that just is so um, appropriate for water. And also developing a little bit more of these darker values in the water that are up in here. A little more blue, a little more brown. Sometimes I will do a, a more predominant vertical stroke, but I might come across it with just a little bit of a horizontal um, stroke. A little bit of sienna over here with some white as this piece of bank wraps around and comes into the light. There's some grays over here. Just to suggest, we don't want to draw the eye off the canvas by making something really interesting in the shadows. Now we've got this beautiful green down here in the water, so I'm gonna kind of gently lay some of that in place, and then I'm gonna paint some shadows from the trees on the surface of the water. 
So again, this is the green that I used in the leaves up in here. bit of surgery along the way. And a little bit of white into this green seems appropriate right about in this area. I'll pop in some the leafy reflections above. Okay. okay, pulling some of the sunlight back on that beach, right, that sandy bank over there. Just a few. Now I'm noticing that over there, behind these bushes, it's a little softer sunlight because it's really more intensely hitting um, the passages up in front, which is where I want the focal point anyway. So I'm going to soften that intensity a little bit. There's deeper purples back in here. So you can make your fall colors, your fall painting really beautiful colors. Look for the purples and look for um, those colors that you may not notice right away. And where can you put those? The most beautiful fall paintings focus on a um, secondary color scheme which is focused around orange, green, and purple. I love those blue jays. Alright, now right here, we have a really intense sunspot right by the rock. So let's hit that really hard here. I'll put the rock back in too. Not, we don't really see that down in the water, so, but I kind of start to see some of the bank in the water over here, so let's start putting some of that in there. Okay, and then I'll focus on this area right now. Ultraman Blue, Burnt Sienna, gives you a nice bank shadow over here. So I'm putting that bush that we have here just with a nice crisp shadow underneath and suggest some of these tree features holding it up. So when I made that passage back in here that was just a little bit more blah, um, I'm adding into it um, just some variations, just enough to, um, so that it doesn't just drop off. And it kind of ties them together, some of that over there. Okay. 
and um, there's a birch tree over here that I'm going to put in place of that dead tree. So working on that, I'm going to start with a middle tone color for that with just a gray and then I'll pop into that highlights. So with this color, I will draw it. Gently lift as I get down to the bottom. Now I want to put that with it's all fresh in my hand. I want to put it down here too. Going the opposite. Okay, so a few branches up at the top. Just suggest a few. We don't have to put them all in. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow on that tree. So I'm just taking some Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Sienna. And this is where you just don't want to breathe. You kind of just go right down the shadow side. And now when I get to the bottom, I'm going to press a little harder because I want this darker color to cover the whole base of the tree, the whole lower portion is all good. Like now we'll come through with some of the highlights. So I clean my brush off for that. Just take, I don't want to take just plain white, so I'll take a smallest bit of cadmium yellow and that'll make it look even more sunlit. Fine for that, and then I'll let some of these other branches from the um, tree with all the fall color right next to it kind of cover that up. Oh, before I get into that, I'm going to isolate these tree trunks so that I can paint the foliage over the top of the tree trunks. They are just a nice solid dark, so let's go ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and starting at the top with a nice chiseled brush. Have a very elegant sort of gentle curve like that. I give it a little press at the bottom just so that the trunk has a little bit more foot to stand on. Now, see, I don't want them all going parallel like that, so I'm going to adjust that a little. And angle some of that a little bit that way. All right, now some of these branches will just, I'm going to just take the color that's right in that trunk and just pull it one way or the other. And while it's all fresh in my head, I'm going to draw, uh, drag them down, too. So they're going to curve the opposite direction. Now, when you get to your focal point area, you really want to just slow down and take the time to make that look exactly the way you want it to look. Um, some of these passages in here where the 
foliage is closer to the tree trunk are going to be a little bit darker. So just little pieces of color. And it's okay if some things get lost. You can always find them again. Okay, let's put some of that down here. A little bit of highlight on those trees. The sun's coming this way, so mixing up just a light gray. And I don't want to go all the way down each tree trunk, so I'm just going to pick out a few spots on. Just like that. Now I'm going to take my brush, it's mostly dried off, and just kind of lose some of those choppy brush strokes. Okay, and then down around the base, I have more sunlight hitting that patch of grass down here that I really did want to use as part of my focal point um, feature in here. Getting that really nice sunlit bank feel. Those trees are shadows, so ultramarine blue. Let's give them some sense of being sunlit. And then the bank comes along like this. A little bit more sunlight in that fall tree. So yellow oak or cad yellow, white. Let's just spice that up a little. Just just a bit, a bit. You don't need very much. So whatever you do up there, you gotta do down here. And we're gonna just knock it down a little bit darker. Okay, now I'm going to clean up this bank, and as I step back, I'll see if there's anything else that needs immediate work. Oh, my rock. All right. Now this brush that I'm using is a size 4, and it's a synthetic, and I like it because it can hold a sharp point, and I can just use the corner um, to get in there and do something sharp if I need to. A little tiny detail, or... giving the bank a little bit of form by allowing my brush stroke to define that as it comes around. And that rock needs a highlight. And that highlight stands out more because right behind it is darker. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and burn sienna and just bring the shadow of that bush down in front of that rock a little bit more. Just like that. Now there's some beautiful shadows stretching across. Um, oh, you know what? I just wanted to clean that a little. Well, I've got this dark on here, so let's do some shadows in the water. So 
what does Bob Ross call this? Your bravery test. <laughs> Just streak it right across the surface of that water. Cleaning up some of the sand over here. Okay, now just a few sharp accents and I'm done. So where the water meets this sand over here, I'm just going to take a nice sharp chiseled edge on my brush just to give it a sense of place in, over here. I guess you know when you're done with the painting when you're all out of ultramarine blue. Time to quit. <laughs> okay, so I think what I might do just before we close off is paint one of those little ducks. I know somebody out there will say, you should have painted the duck. <laughs> so I'll just suggest it and uh, we'll see what happens. If it looks bad, then you know. Just to put a few in there. Give it that fatal green. Right ahead. Um, I'm gonna take, whoops. Just a little bit of reflection. Just indicating some water movement, and that's it. Okay, well that wraps us up. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me, and I hope that you, if, if you enjoyed it, that you like and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Okay, bye-bye guys.